Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about Yurel. Yurel is one of the most interesting characters since her release because her playstyle is pretty much completely shifted, and she's one of the characters that went the fastest from being at a release at a really awkward level to going to HEC and being a must pick with a 92% popularity, a above 50% win rate, depending on whichever uh, region you go in. She's picked in nearly every single game by the pros, and today I want to talk to you guys why, and then I want to show you a video with a pro game analysis where we go through and tear apart every little aspect to figure out why Yurel is played so much. So... What are her builds? To start off, her build in the pro play is pretty much just always, the level 1 is always Mirad's Insight. It allows you to keep healing yourself in a solo lane for a long period of time. It's just a very valuable tool, and it helps you out heal just about any laner's damage. Level 4, almost every time in pro play, we see Aegis of Light. Aegis of Light gives 35 armor and a pretty wide radius to all of your allies for 5 seconds when you jump in. You don't need to jump in at full power, so it's a very quick thing. The cooldown of your E is about 6 seconds, which means that you can keep that 35 armor on your team at something like an 80% 80, 80 upkeep if you really wanted to. A little bit higher than 80% upkeep, which is really nice. So in general... If you wanted to, you can keep that up quite often. Level 7, we see a variety of talents that are picked. Usually, it's uh, either Holy Avenger for the resets on the 7 to deal more damage, and Divine Steed. If you don't need those resets, or if you feel like you're going to be using your jump to give your own team armor more often, then you'll see that the Steed gets picked up so that you can give your own team armor rather than jumping on the enemies. Then if you see that the Holy Avenger is being picked up at 7, oftentimes we see that Velen's Chosen is picked up at 13. Why is this? Well, because with the extra spell power every time that you hit an enemy with a maximum charge ability, and 7 is always going to be a maximum charge ability, you're going to keep getting a 1 second cooldown and max charging and getting 30% extra spell damage, dealing a lot of spell damage with Holy Avenger as well as with Velen's Chosen. However, if you are finding yourselves not jumping into the enemy as often, you're going to see the Divine Steed and the Aldor Peacekeeper picked up instead. What this means is that you're going to likely be jumping into your backline, giving them armor, and you're going to be using the Peacekeeper to reduce the damage of enemy divers like a Genji. However, this build is a little bit more unreliable based off of uh, what I've been watching lately, and it's a lot less consistent. It's also something that you'll see a lot fewer times in pro play as out of these you can see over 60 games were played here and a little over 20 were played with this variation of the build level 16 there are two talent options that you can pick up either templar's verdict which makes it to where you your fully charged hammer will knock back and remove 20 armor and at the same time, it'll do 4% of the max health. So what this is valuable for is if you are fighting against maybe a, a strong tank and you want to just knock him back into your team, do a percent of his health and lower his armor, then your team can blow up the tank very quickly. This talent's probably one of the best ever since they changed it for countering someone like a Garrosh where the Ural could be kind of just ready to get thrown by the Garrosh, then can knock the Garrosh back with an instant cast, and then walk towards it. The Garrosh will be out of armor, and you'll blow up very quickly. Uh, in the other case, where you're picking Yurel and you need more damage on your team, then Holy Wrath is still being picked up. And at level 20, it's always Seraphim. The fact that Yurel has to deal a... has to charge all of her abilities makes it difficult for her to survive in a meta with so much CC, which makes it to where you can boot, go unstoppable for the full duration of your channel, and then use your ability that you need to, use your instant casts, and then you'll have Seraphim up every 10 seconds. So these are the builds that are being utilized by the pros. Now let's actually see her in-game. So Dignitas has a Euro player on their team named Wubby, and many people who have learned how to play Urel have learned from Wubby as Wubby is considered one of the best Urels in all of Heroes of the Storm, and has been performing very, very well with, I, I want to say something like a 90% win rate on Urel, but that's also not saying too much, seeing as they uh, 
they play Urel a lot, and Dignitas is winning a lot. So every one of their players has like a 90% win rate on everything. Anyways, so the beginning of these games always starts out about the same. They go in and they set up for a team fight. Now, Urel was hiding in the uh, the fog just in case if there was a fight that went down. She could step up, deal some damage. But instead, uh, we're going to see her just kind of play safe. Now, the solo lane on this map tends to usually be bottom lane. So you see Urel's just kind of watching a little bit. But she'll probably get down to bottom lane in time. Does a quick slow on a bad Benny, um, Joanna, and a quick knockback. Should be able to take out bad Benny. And that's a simple way to get some value off of Urel, is jump into the back line, knock him in. The only challenge about this is you might lose out on Soak. Urel did lose two minions, but in the process, one kill was worth a little bit more than two minions. Now, this is the thing that I want to share a little bit about what people need to do on this particular map. So, one of the things about Urel, and why I wanted to show this map in particular is because on Braxis, it's easy to play Urel and dominate because the enemies can never get on the point. You outheal all their damage, you out-sustain them, you can push them out, and you will always win on Braxis until, unless they hard counter you. But what do you do on a map where people can just play safe and hide far away? Well, you freeze the lane. If you can see what Wubby's doing, Wubby specifically healed away from the minions not to do too much damage and is leaving the minions close to his area. He's freezing the lane on his side of the map. Now that these minions are going to be dealing damage to his minions, uh, the, the Blaze may lose out on experience. So now what the URL might do is the URL might try to find where the Blaze is hiding and just constantly harassing him instead of actually fighting any of these minions. In this case, we're going to switch over to the Blaze's point of view and see if he misses any of these experience from the URL. So the URL, he keeps stepping forward just in time to get a minion, but you can see how powerful this could be in an actual game. Uh, imagine if you were in, in Hero League and you weren't against a pro player, you could zone them out of so much experience, and you can see how far she's causing him to stay forward. There, she's making him get so far forward whenever he is in this lane. And it's just, it's such a powerful technique. There's a minion that died pretty far away. I bet he missed an experience there. We could even check. They should be, Blaze should still have higher experience. Oh no, because you're all got a kill. I forgot about that. Um, you can see how she's not trying to kill any of the minions. She's just trying to keep him away. And she knocked him back right as a minion died. And another minion died. He probably got experience from that one. But you can see what she's trying to do. She doesn't care about pushing this lane until... Until they're ready to do a turn in or until they're ready to reset and in this case she wants to reset She has too many minions to be able to freeze so while he's dealing with that She's gonna go for a gank and this is how you should be playing your You should be always going for the zoning you should be aggressing on the enemy And then when your wave gets too big you should break apart the enemy's thing So they have to deal with this really big wave and then you have time to gank you have time to uh, go back Time to hit fountains, whatever you need. Once again, a big wave. Urel can have an, all the opportunity to either turn in or she can simply go and gank. In this case, Blaze is trying to stop her from turning in. Uh, and he's he's missing a little bit. But uh, he's not really missing any soak because of it. Which is nice. Once again, she's just blowing up the wave. Because it's too far from, from uh, her tower to be able to freeze it. So she's not going to try to freeze it here. She's just going to blow it up as fast as possible and see if the lane can reset. Once the lane resets, then it's up to her to be able to do whatever she wants to. And she goes back in for the gank again. Nothing too crazy. Now, why I like this map as well for Urel at least uh, why I want to show this map as an example is because it shows you that even though this map is one of those maps that the solo lane doesn't really matter. It's a map that you don't need to ever win this lane. You could just hold your own in the solo lane and you're perfectly fine. But they still wanted to pick Urel even though the solo lane is not that important for them. Why did they want to pick Urel even then? And it's because they value Urel. Dignitas values Urel even in the team fight. A lot of times people think that Urel is just a solo laner who wins and isn't really that valuable in team fights, but Dignitas is like, no, we like Urel. We like her for the team fight, and they're going to show you why they like her in the team fight. 
I personally find that Yorel is cool because you can either draft her to be tankier and have more utility for the team, or you can draft her to do a lot of damage. And Wubby's actually pretty known for going the damage route with Yorel, the one that I showed you where he goes the E reset on uh, 7 and the spell power on 13, as he can constantly be jumping on people doing more and more damage. We're going to find out pretty soon what he picks up at level 7, and in this case, he's going the damage build. That Holy Avenger, he's going to get the resets on the E. Now he goes up top to get the uh, turn in. And he is not going to stop until this gets turned in. <laughs> but uh, if you're ever playing Hero League and you're trying to find out how to abuse Yorel, she works best on maps that uh, that you're, you kind of have to force the, uh, the solo lane... For example, like a Dragonshire or Braxis, where the solo lane is so important and you're forced to have a solo laner who has a lot of capabilities. So, she's best on those maps, but again, she still works in all the maps as long as you play her correctly. And this is where Wubby should show everyone a little bit of how you should be playing Yorel when you get into team fights, and we'll get into team fights later. Experience is pretty even across the board. Now, they are getting some web weavers. We see him just pushing forward a little bit, hiding in the rotation. This blaze is really far forward, I'm surprised. Oh, so he went for the armor there instead of going for a kill. He understood how much damage he actually had available and didn't risk doing anything too crazy with it. Now he's just simply using his ease off cooldown. He's actually getting pretty low. But he has a fountain. One of the great parts about Yurel is the amount of sustain that she has. Makes it easy for you to uh, jump in and out of fights and, without ever needing to use your fountain. So when you do end up getting into some major fights, you you can always still have your fountain available. So Blaze is really tearing apart this. Ultimately, they're not gaining very much from this objective. Uh, but hopefully, they'll be able to uh, still gain some benefit from this. Both teams have another turn in available if needed. <clears throat> so you can see that uh, Yurel's first thing that she's trying, clear the entire wave to distract Blaze so that she can go and turn in again. Another reason why I like her on this map is because you can jump over these walls whenever you need to. Say, for instance, you want to try to move around lanes and you're worried that people are hiding. You can just hop right over walls. Level 10, we always see Argent Defender, or sorry, Ardent Defender being picked up. The main reason is because it's not limited by anything in particular. Sacred Ground's limited to having you stay in a specific spot. It's predictable, it's not great. Uh, Ardent Defender, you can use that wherever you want to at any time. And it's not only an invulnerability, but it's also a form of healing for yourself. So there's a variety of reasons why it's a very powerful ultimate ability. Uh, and we will, uh, we're going to fast forward a little bit. Once again, she goes to clear up, uses hard and defender pretty early on. I think one of the big mistakes that people use on URL is they they make the ardent defender too predictable. They wait until they get to about 20% health and they pop it, hoping to get healed for all of their health. While Wubby's very good at utilizing it just for the, the damage reduction aspect, not necessarily the heal. And Wubby will jump in and use it right as the enemies are using all their abilities while he's still at a higher health amount. And so he doesn't get all the value from the heals, but he still gets a lot of value off of everything else. See him going for the armor immediately. 70 armors available on Raynor right now, as he got the armor bonus from the Urel, as well as the armor bonus from his own um, fighter flight. So he, uh, he got a huge chunk of armor between them. 70 armor, he did almost no damage from the uh, Phoenix. And we see Urel immediately prepare a knockback. Knock everyone back as the bunker's blown up. And then back onto the fight, jumping in there, getting heals off. And once again, fountain's available. She doesn't need it in lane. She can just keep getting the fountain whenever it's up. And with them having two people dead, they can definitely get another turn in here. I love how Wubby always goes into the fog of war and abuses this fog of war whenever there's a fight. Because it makes it really nice if, if this... If uh, Malfurion was able to root someone right about here, they wouldn't know that the uh, their Urel's ready to go to immediately slow him. So I really like how she utilizes, or how Wubby utilizes the uh, the Fog of War. 
It's just something really good that you, you don't really pay attention to until it's it's uh, used against you and you end up dying out of nowhere. Urel's also very good against Blaze, or at least, sorry, Wubby's very good against Blaze. Really good at positioning to where the stuns never are an escape, but instead just immediately stun her. We're going to fast forward a tad, get to level 13. Level 13, we see that the... Spell power is picked up. As I said before, it's pretty much the uh, the easiest way to get a scary amount of damage. We see charging this up, and boom, she has the 10% spell power already up. And then she goes for the fully charged E. She has the 20% spell power all the way up, and the E did 371 damage against someone with armor. The E's back up again. Another E goes off. We have the 30% spell damage and 450 damage. Um... So immediately you can see the, the potential right there of how scary you can get very quickly by just the amount of damage you can do, followed by a quick auto attack doing 250 damage, finishing off the Deckard Cane. And that is what I why they go this, this build, is you have so much potential for doing a lot of damage very quickly in these team fights because you keep getting these resets off of your E, dealing more and more damage. And you keep increasing your spell damage every time, as well as these resets just keep giving you more and more of your E's off. It's an incredible amount of damage, and it's such an easy build to, to pull off. Like, mechanically, it's pretty easy. The, the decision-making that you might need can be a little bit tricky, but overall, mechanically, it's a, it's a pretty easy build. So, uh, nice knockback right there. Just uh, dismounts as well as scares her off just a tad. We have the third objective that's being picked up by Dignitas in this game. And uh, they immediately get the Joanna out there. The E did not go off because the Joanna was able to CC. But you can see the, the knockback of the tank. And this is what I really like about Dignitas as well. Dignitas can... They can find a tank target. And instead of them focusing everything but the tank, they just grab the tank and blow them up. And I think that's one of the greatest parts about watching like Dignitas as well as some of these major pro teams like Gen G is they don't look at the tank and go, oh, we can't focus the tank. They look at the tank and go, well, the tank's out of position and we have enough damage to kill the tank. Let's just go for it. So you could see how quickly they were able to just blow up the Joanna and it only took them just a couple seconds. So we're going to fast forward just a tad. Now we've hit level 16. We see that the Templar's Verdict was picked up. Once again, they're against two tanks, and they are good at blowing apart tanks. So they pick the talent that makes it easier for them to take apart tanks, lowering the armor, doing percent health. And you see the setup of the wings at the moment. They do have the level advantage, so if this fight goes off, this is a really good fight for them. Once again, sitting in fog of war, even if someone steps into this bush right here, they're not going to see the Urel. They're only going to see probably the first minion here. So hiding in this fog of war makes it to where she's got a really good shot at jumping in on someone. It's a little predictable, uh, but she jumps in gets rooted she knocks back the blaze immediately so that the stun couldn't really be followed up by anything too big but they have all of their abilities available there's a, a lornado that's being used the first thought i think was that i i figured that urel would immediately give armor to rainer but instead she held on to it which i really like this because now she can go back in and use it for an aggressive play if needed and again if she keeps getting those resets she's in a really good spot so they were able to take the keep so they don't need to stay any more any longer the, the rainer gets tossed in and she's just holding the wings on as long as possible and i think this is something that a lot of people also don't think about they think that if they they're holding their ability too long it's wasted which in the middle of a fight that's sure is the case but outside of it a fully charged ability is still a fully charged ability so uh, as long as you're you're not wasting any time, like in that case, she was zoning out everyone as her team was dealing damage to the keep. So in that case, her just channeling that was getting value, even though she never actually finished the cast. So we've got uh, two level lead, uh, three objectives already picked up from Dignitas. We're reaching the end game, and you can still see how powerful Yurel is, even though a lot of people initially thought that she was just a solo lane winner and she didn't actually bring that much to team fights. But now we can definitely see how when we get into these team fights, it's very easy for Yurel to just hop in, knock her back, lower the armor. So she already lowered the armor of Joanna, allowed Poik to just burn him down as Jaina. And then she's immediately going off to the next target, jumping over the walls, 
Then uh, once again, you see that she does the the W, giving the uh, armor reduction onto the blaze as well as doing percent health damage. And once again, another tank is blown apart. And then into another jump, which is slowing. We already have the extra 30% spell damage, which means that we did 513 damage to this Deckard. And the cooldown is already res reset. Onto another E, immediately goes onto the Phoenix, doing a huge chunk of damage once again. And this entire fight, this entire last part, which is the fight that ends off this game, was all set up by this Urel. The lowered armor was allowing them to take out the Joanna early in the fight. The slow and the lowered armor was able to kill the Blaze. The slow was then able to kill the Phoenix. And Urel was able to take that fight for the team. This is why uh, Wubby and Dignitas put such a high priority on Urel. Even though they can pick her on maps where the soul laner isn't that important. Like this map. In all honesty, the soul laner is probably one of the least important roles on this map because the lanes are so close, you could pretty much just five-man roam back and forth and cover all the lanes. So, <clears throat> having a map like this, and they still decide to pick Urel, really tells you guys how much priority they put on this particular hero. So hopefully you guys have learned a little bit about why the pros play Urel, and in hopefully you've gotten inspired to try her out a little bit differently in Hero League. Particularly, this build that is used is one of my favorites for Hero League, with the exception of Templar's Verdict, I usually go with the Holy Wrath. As it's a build that you can be pretty scary in the solo lane, but then late game you have so much damage potential that you're this tanky hero that's also slowing people a lot, giving armor to your entire team, and dealing a huge amount of damage, almost 500 damage every other second. It's incredible how much uh, this, this build can do. So that is Urel, why the pros player. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos. I have a whole series of why the pros play, as well as I am getting through why the pros don't play certain heroes. So feel free to check out some of those as well. And as always, I always appreciate subscribes. Thank you.